Hello, hello, welcome. Question for you. Does it feel like your arse is spreading like butter melting on toast? I mean, the reason I'm asking is because do you know that you sit too much but kind of can't help it, especially in our current state of a more, you know, virtual lifestyle, right? Well, I've got your back. Stay tuned and I'll give you lots of great ways to keep that arse from spreading like butter. A warm hello to you listening live and on the replay today. Feel free to grab a cup of tea and join me. We won't be too long, but just enough to give you all the goods. And um, I invite you to drop any questions or comments or emojis or anything like that in the comments so that we can um, feel like we're kind of in a real current conversation, even though we're virtual. And what I have for you today, complimentary, is a whole chapter out of my book, Reverse Heart Disease Naturally, that actually um, gives you even more details than I have time to share with you today in our live. Um, and if you want that, just give me the code word in the comments, move more, and we will get that to you right away. The other option is that you can go to, there's a link in the comments, createtohealstudio.com. Go to that link, scroll down, you'll see a picture of the book, and you can get the whole book complimentary and then go to chapter six, because that's the chapter that we're going to be going over today. So either way, um, it's, it's your choice. And if we've not yet met, I'm Lori Morse, a 30-year practitioner, Chinese medicine director of the Sacred Health Academy, where we work with spirit-centered women and teach them um, how to stop struggling, how to, to get rid of pain, how to increase their energy, how to stop stress in their tracks, and basically awaken her birthright of sacred health, which is a real thing, so that she can live with vitality, ease in her body, and peace and purpose, right? So let's talk about sitting. I mean, sitting is a lure, right? Um, I remember back in my, I don't know, 20s or 30s, I, I used to think about old people. You know, I'm 60 now, so I'm like one of those old people that I was thinking about back then. And how they would always sit in their lazy boy for hours on end and watch TV. And I used to think, oh my God, you know, that's so lazy. <laughs> um, but now I kind of get it. I mean, I don't let myself do it, but the lure to do it is pretty strong. So I'm going to open our chapter. You're not going to see me do this necessarily. But I want to talk to you about a book I read a number of years ago called Sitting Kills, Moving Heels. Heels. Sitting Kills, Moving Heels. And it's was written by the former director uh, of NASA's Life Science Division, uh, Dr. Joan Vernacos, and she uh, published this book in 2000, uh, 2011. And it's kind of an inconspicu inconspicuous little book, but it packs a powerful punch. And basically she studied astronauts working in NASA for decades and learned that when a human body is outside of gravity as astronauts are, the return to gravity is accompanied by several health health challenges and and you know world around the world this is known right like there's muscle wasting bone loss decreased blood volume increased body fat achy joints a depressed immune system loss of collagen right that elasticity decreased cardiac output reduced insulin sensitivity um, that's bad. We actually want insulin sensitivity um, for, for stable blood sugar and cellular energy production. And the other thing that she noticed was a sluggish gut. And that's just to name a few. So when I say it's, it's known around the world, I mean by those who work with astronauts. Like this is just a given. Astronauts know when they come back, the longer they're out of gravity, the more this, um, these kinds of things ramp up and are problems in their body. And then they have to come back into gravity and be like retrained and, and treated, and there's all kinds of ways for that. But um, there's a plot twist to her research, which was interesting. What she found is that regular people, not astronauts, have the very same health challenges when we sit too much. So same thing, you know, muscle wasting, heart problems, insulin issues, fat gaining, um, collagen decrease, immune, immunity, um, a decrease in immune function. And she talks about how before the invention of things like washing machines and garage door openers, we moved much more than we do today. And she, she refers to this type of movement as non-exercise activity. And you don't hear much about this, right? You hear about exercise and go to the gym and walk and run and all those things, but she's talking about something very different. And the entire chapter of, the, of my book that you're welcome to 
we'll go into this in much more detail. I'm going to give you kind of the highlights, right? And, and so her, she surmises, her research shows that we don't do enough at this point in time, you know, 21st century conveniences, right? We don't do enough of this type of, of movement, non-exercise activity. And we're meant, as a human body, we're meant to have perpetual movement. And otherwise, gravity takes over and we're subject to the same problems as astronauts, right? And it's important because our muscle fibers respond to non-exercise or natural physical activities distributed intermittently throughout the day. So if you think about it, we used to lift the garage door. We used to hang laundry. We used to juice things. We used to chop more. You know, we, we, we used to bend down and lift things and we just don't do that the same in the same way that we used to and working out for three hour three times a week for an hour three times a week is a different kind of muscle body response right so and, and it's not like you shouldn't do that i you know don't think that that's wrong it's just that we need both right it's the movement throughout the day with small brief yet frequent muscular movements that we make throughout the day that are vital. And we're gonna talk about, I'll give you a list of those. I mean, I'll say them to you and then of course they're in the chapter if you'd like that. But, um, and most important because this changes our blood volume and when our blood volume doesn't have to have a chance to change all day long. And I think I remember her saying that it was about, we need 33, 33, 32 or 33 blood volume changes. It's why when people lay in the hospital for days on end, it's really problematic to their body, right? We need to change position, positions from laying to standing, from sitting to standing, from you know to bending and, and squatting to coming back up, and stretching and reaching and you know playing an instrument or fidgeting in general. All of those help our blood volume to not be as stagnant as it is when we're sitting or or staying in the same position, you know, for hours, right? And sitting at a desk, as many of us do now, doesn't engage nearly enough of this type of movement. And the consequences are the things that we already talked about, right? So, um, and the other thing that happens when we, when we have too little movement is that we are, um, it leads to what's known as lipo. Lipo means fat, toxicity, so toxic fat. It's the accumulation of abnormal metabolites, such as triglycerides and other end products that like stiffen our blood vessels and stiffen our muscles and, and our heart is a muscle, so it stiffens our heart, right? And, and this is why standing workstations have gotten more popular. Um, but I wanna tell you something really simple. I'm actually standing, I don't have a standing workstation except for this music stand that I bought on Amazon. If you just go on Amazon and search music stand, you know, for less than $100, you can get I think I paid, I don't know, 45 or $50 for this music stand. So it gives me the option to stand up and I do that a lot during the day. I don't, I don't have enough room to get one of those mechanical standing setups. You know, I know a lot of people have those now, but I, I just wanted to give you this other simple kind of less expensive option. So that's, you know, um, when, so let me just make a distinction between when we work out, we're doing, you know, like running, walking, cycling, that, that kind of, you know, gym kind of workout the bone um, responds by like a buzzing and a pounding. And that is one way, but that is, that's different than what we're talking about with these small non-workout non physicality activities, right? We need both because it's in our design. So um, let me just scroll down here to the next thing that I wanted to tell you. So the other thing that Dr. Renico says is that the key to success lies in increasing the amount I mean, I'm kind of repeating myself, but just to give you the highlight, increasing the amount of natural habitual physical activity throughout the day. And she also recognizes and her research bears out that it's the key to independence as we age. It's important that we have balance. It's important that we have, um, uh, 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 that our muscles have the capacity to sort of catch us if, we're, if we step off a curb wrong. It also helps with blood pressure control. It benefits muscles, joints, bones, and balance. That's, those are keys to aging well and maintaining our independence, right? So let's go to the um, ways that we can consciously improve our movement throughout the day. Some of these you've probably heard of, but maybe not all of them. Very simply, when you're sitting at your desk, if you're sitting for a longer period of time, like she says, every 20 minutes, we should just 
stand up. You don't have to run around the block or, you know, walk through your office or any, just stand up and sit down, right? Like that's a blood volume switch. You can, you can stand up, squat, you know, stand back up and then sit back down again. Some people think, oh my God, I can't do that every 20 minutes. At least do it, that's three times an hour every 20 minutes. At least do it twice if you can. And set your alarm, right? Like just set your alarm for every 30 minutes. And when it goes off, just stand up. Nobody is going to care if you do that. You know, even if you're standing, I've, I've had people say, oh, I don't want, that's disruptive if I'm standing in a meeting. It's not. Just stand up, stand back, and then sit down when you're ready. It's, you know, who cares what people think? One of the things I love about getting older, about gathering my years, is I don't really care what people think anymore. So it's kind of good. A little, little, little liberation, if you will. So um, the other thing is, is stand straight, stand up straight and walk tall so that your blood isn't, you know, disrupted in, in the, its flow by kinks in your, uh, in your, um, what do you call that? <laughs> in your, well, in your standing up tall. There's a word for it. Anyway. Okay. So the next thing is stretch throughout the day. You know, sometimes when I'm waiting for my tea, I'll hold on to the edge of the kitchen sink and I'll just stretch open and I'll just lean back while I'm holding on. And, you know, I, I can just feel it opening my whole back or I'll, you know, reach up or I'll bend down and touch my toes. Stretch your body. Stretching is so important. I should do a whole video on that. Anyway, I, I always get these ideas when we're together in this video muscle. When you're walking through a doorway, you can put your hands on the doorway, either one or both at a time, and stretch open your pectoral muscles. So important because we're in these hunched over positions with our tech all the time. So you really want to do the counter activity to open things up and get blood flowing through all of these muscles that are so contracted in, in the ways we're, you know, in our daily ways these days take the stairs, park further away from the store you're going to and walk, you know, give yourself the opportunity to walk a little bit longer. This is a good one. This is one of hers from her book. Put your pants or your socks or your shoes on, not sitting down, but standing up and balancing on one leg. So you're forcing your body to practice balancing on one leg. This balance piece is really important and, and that's one of the things to that aids our independence as we age, right? So it also builds ab strength. You can practice, you know, holding your abs tight, get, you know, getting some of that, you know, that, um, that ab work and, um, and, and just, just practice. It's okay if you lose your balance, stand next to your bed or something so you can catch yourself, but practice doing it. It really matters. I can actually, I can actually do it now. I can put a shoe and a sock and a, and a pant leg on uh, by balancing on one leg. I couldn't in the beginning. So, you know, it just takes a little bit of practice and you'll get better over time. Um, <clears throat> sweep by hand, right? Like go out and sweep your driveway. Don't use one of those blowers. It's terrible for the environment and sweeping, you know, or raking, you know, those are really good movements for our body. Um, anyway, uh, play ping pong or do jump rope, go for a swim. I mean, all of these movements, kayak, you know, do those, those kinds of things are all really good muscle movements. Tai Chi is really good. Um, it's a version of, it, it, I mean, it's a Chinese, it's been around for ages, for thousands of years. It's considered to be like a moving meditation with really good benefits. If you uh, looked up Tai Chi research, you'd probably be surprised as to what it offers a human body. And those are slow movements, very specific breath and movement you know, that we're not used to in our Western lifestyle. But if you were to take that on, and even for any of these things, if you just do little bits of, throughout the day, as I've mentioned, but then if you want to take on something like Tai Chi or yoga, you know, if it makes you feel concerned that you won't have enough time to do something like, just do five or 10 minutes, grab a YouTube video and do five or 10 minutes. You know, you're, you can't, the mind can't rebel about, about five or 10 minutes. It can totally rebel about a half hour or an hour every day. It's like, you know, it's going to throw up its, its you know, uh, hands and say, there's no way we have time for that. And then you just won't do any of it, right? But if you just do five or 10 minutes, you'll realize, oh, that's doable. That's pretty easy. So these, now I just want to talk about some, you know, general exercise ideas. Walking daily is a great thing because you get all the major muscle um, muscles in your legs, the large muscles. Um, bend down, pick up a leaf, you know, um, just stop and pet a dog or something like that. I, I like walking where there's beauty because then there's a nourishment from nature and a connection to nature that is vital 
for our health, right? So you can take a dance class, or if you don't want to go to dance, just find some favorite music on, you know, on your computer and just move your body, right? Like that's very easy. I already mentioned swimming. A mini trampoline is really good because that's so good for our lymph system. And that bouncing is really good. That softer bouncing rather than pounding on pavement when we're running, that softer bouncing is really good for our bone strength too. Um, a bicycle is really good, stationary or street. High intensity interval training, they call it HIT, where you go really hard. It's like a 20 minute workout, right? Very short and quick and easy, like big bang for your buck. Great return on your investment of time and movement, right? So you go hard for 30 seconds and then you just go normal for 90 seconds. Hard again for your hardest. Like I do it on a, a stationary a life cycle I have. So I go really, really hard for 30 seconds and then normal for 90 seconds and then really, really hard for 30. And you just do that. It's like, I think it's a cycle of nine. They recommend eight, but for me to do a 20 minute workout, it just comes out to be nine. And it is a good workout. You get your heart rate up, but not too much for a long period of time because you come back to that sort of normal movement. Look it up, high intensity interval in, uh, high intensity interval training if you don't already know about it or aren't already doing it. A rowing machine is really good. Did you know that conductors, musical conductors, actually get a slightly lower insurance rate because this movement is so healthy for the heart, lungs, and lymph? And insurance companies know that. So they actually, um, that's a thing, right? So, uh, and they live longer. So body weight or strengthening exercises, I mean, I could do like five shows on that. So there's just, you, you know, just know that that's really good for you. Anything else that you love that feels more like fun in terms of moving your body than pressure is valuable. You know, practice squatting and picking up, um, you know, dirt to plant some flowers or something like that. Just, you know, just boxes, whatever, just, just, you know, you know how to, to squat and bend your knees and hold your abs in order to pick up something heavy rather than just hinging over. That's, that's not really good for your back. Um, you know, sets us up for injury. So no matter what you do through all this movement and joy is to remember to breathe, right? Breath is a sacred exchange with the life force that is keeping, that, that is who we are. Like we cannot be separate from our breath. Um, so anyway, I just, just always want to make a, make a, a, a plug for breath. <laughs> okay. So that is what I have for you today. So that is, if you want to have this chapter, just put more movement in the comments. If you want to have the whole book, go to create to heal studio. The link is in, in the, um, in the description and then scroll down and you'll see the, the um, colored photograph of the, you know, graphic of the book. And then you can just, uh, pop your email in there and we'll send it to you right away. So um, just to recap, we talked about uh, why sitting, what sitting, what sitting does if we do it over time for too long, right? And then we talked about um, why that's important and what to do about it. Some of the ways that you can make for that non, um, that non-workout activity, the physical activity throughout the day, spreading it throughout the day. We talked about how important it is to have blood volume change because that that literally changes everything in terms of our health and our capacity to be in the best balance we can be throughout the day. So I would love to hear from you. What, you know, what clicked for you? Is there anything that makes sense to you that you think you can do? I, you know, when, when you share what you got, it kind of helps other people learn too. So I'd love to know, drop it in the comments and I'll be back next week, same time, same place. And we're going to talk about your sacred blueprint that is coded for health in every single one of your cells. It's a big deal. I try not to get too dramatic about this, but it's a big deal. So a sacred health is your, as a journey, you know, get, accessing our sacred health is a journey and it's yours to take. It's my job to make sure you don't miss your heart calling you to that journey. It's a one step at a time on a path that gets you more energy, less pain, less stress and worry, a nutritional lifestyle that maybe you've been trying to get together for a long time, and most of all, your birthright of peace and purpose. So, and this is all without having to spend ridiculous amounts of time and money, and mostly because it's our design to be well, unlike what the cultural current tends, you know, would have us believe. So we need to sort of make a distinction between the cultural current of disease and what is our natural birthright. And when we do, when we 
when we make that distinction and when we get on a path that is very clear and you start feeling, oh yeah, this is this is right, then you know that it's your birthright and you can continue building that momentum. So thank you for being you and tending to your sacred health. You may or may not know this, but not only does it matter to you, but it matters to life and the world. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Be well and be sacred until then.